So what was kind of the, like, what led you to transfer and, like, go back to UT versus staying in Alabama? It was a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I kind of uh, dealt with, like, a lot of, uh, like, depression. Oppenheimer, I'm not as You're big on, West the, on the Barbie. Yeah. You're not as big on Oppenheimer, that's what you said? No, I'm big on, on Oppenheimer. I'm not big on Barbie. Well, what do you I don't, have against I don't, Robbie and I, Ryan Gosling? I have nothing against them, personally, but I, I don't know what the, what is it? Sounds like you hate feminism. Like what? <laughs> welcome back to another episode of the Rome's Room Podcast. I am your host, Jerome, and welcome to my room. Yeah! Yay! Yes, thank you, thank you, You're thank welcome. you. Um, today we've got two co-hosts. You guys met Jared Helton in the last episode. Um, he is the... Almost PhD, but not quite there yet. Has mm -hmm. been in school for 10 years and is probably going to not graduate. Jared Hullin! Hey! No plan on me. Hey. <laughs> and we've also got Zach. Hey! No, I'm just kidding. That was, that was for the bit. <laughs> you guys didn't laugh because uh, I've already done this bit multiple times because I'm bad at... Well, don't at say that. No, no, no. It's fine. It's Restart. fine. They know. They know. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, no, we've got Zach here as well today. Who He's born and raised right here in undisclosed location in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, probably knows sports better than anyone that I know, even the dumb ones like volleyball. Mm -hmm. That's actually not true not at all. True. But the dumb ones like football. He knows a lot about football. Also not true. Uh, set and spike. That's what I know about. Set and volleyball. spike. There it is. Yeah. Oh. Also an aspiring musician who taught himself how to play the guitar. Honestly, pretty impressive. Uh, and then still uses one Mr. Kanye West for inspiration, even though he's like kind of like a neo-Nazi. Mm -hmm. You should probably get rid of all your Yeezys now. Yeah. Give it up for Zach. Didn't want his last name disclosed, Rayborn. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, in the last episode, Zach, we had uh, the audience kind of meet Jared, kind of his, uh, I guess, like how you grew up, essentially. Yeah. High school, through college, master's, PhD, whatever. Yeah. Um, and would love to kind of similarly do the same for you while we're both asking you questions, just spraying you with mm -hmm. questions left and right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Um, first question being, when we were going from high school into the college age, I think the natural inclination for a lot of us, not Jared, obviously, right. um, was to go to the University of Tennessee because we were kind of born and raised here, and it was just kind of like the easy choice. Now, you ended up going to the University of Alabama with Jared. Yeah. Kind of walk us through like your thought process. Well, I want to the record to set straight. I think I was the first one to say I'm going to Alabama you, before you yeah. did. No, you, you so were the first you, if one. You followed me when as I well. Followed, <laughs> let's, 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 not, <laughs> let's not tell false reality. <laughs> you were the first one of the people like at our high school who who decided to go to Alabama because you knew for a long time. Like, like first in, year. Which yeah. in I was really following my sister. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were the first one to... To walk on for Alabama. Sounds like you're a follower. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, kind of going back to like what you were asking. Um, like my, uh, that's where my dad went. Like mm. my dad had gone there and like my dad was like born and raised in like Alabama. And so like um, growing up, like I was around the university. Like he was a huge like Alabama like football fan. And yeah. so like I was very much like around um, that growing up and um, just kind of, you know, had that similar passion like we would still like we would go to football games together like we would um like spend weekends like in Tuscaloosa. So you kind of knew like very early yeah yeah, yeah yeah so it was very much uh something that i just kind of had planned out yeah. and i i took my trip down there when i was a junior and i was like this is it i know like that's where right. i'm going like this is it for me and like um got accepted in the fall of 2013 mm -hmm. like we we're graduating in uh like spring right. 2014. So like six months before we graduated. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like I knew. Did you so. apply to any other schools or were you just like, I'm going there and that's it? I think I might have applied for UT. Okay. But I mean, that's it Tennessee, was. For the people that think yeah, that's Yeah, University Texas. of Tennessee. Well, we had a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, anytime, well, when I was at Alabama, mm -hmm. um, like I would talk about UT mm -hmm. and people who just, were yeah. like from out of state would be like Texas. We I'm were like, just no. talking about this. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. And why is that? They just we were started really first. Good PR team. Yeah, I'm but we were started again. first, dude. We were started yeah. first. Yeah, but 19, I mean, seventeen ninety four. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. That is a facts. 
But kind of going back to, I guess, like, uh, your question. Um, you know, I applied for UT, and I think, like, Alabama, and that was it. But, I mean, like, I already knew. Yeah. Like, I, like didn't matter what UT said. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I was... Like, regardless of, like, financial aid, whatever, like, if you got in, you were going. Right. 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 Dang. Yeah. Well, okay, so once you got there, yeah. what was it? You did uh, sports management. Uh, no, so I was in telecommunications at the time. Really? So I wanted to, like, go on and, like, do ESPN, okay. like, broadcasting, and, like, that was the end goal. And then, um, Mike I mean, Davis. what? Mike like, Reese Davis, like, yeah. that was my main source yeah. of inspiration yeah. was Reese Davis. Yeah. Shout out Reese Davis. Uh, <laughs> who is Reese Davis? He's the uh, on, uh, on the College well, we Game Day. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a big a, sports, yeah. like college football analyst. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, for ESPN. A bunch of them just got fired from ESPN, just so you know. He did not. He okay. did not. It was not they would lose a lot of money. But anyway, yeah. he went to Alabama, okay. and so like that was kind of who I had like tried to like model yeah. like my my path to ESPN after. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, like, the more that I just got into it, the more that I was just like, I don't know if this is for me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're all 18. Like, we're all 18 at the time. Like, I know you changed. Did you change your major? I did. I also changed And you yeah. changed. I know you yeah. changed your major. I wasn't sure if you Wait, changed you your changed major. you changed your major, too? I was CS for a semester. Oh, snap. Wow, Man. we have so much more commonality than we I thought. That's what we recognized on, like, the first podcast is that we, like, had very similar paths. Even, yeah. like, to the Master's. I forgot like that he very, was thinking about doing, a, like, a Master's like in electrical. Like, applied, yeah. got in. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, because um, I also started off, like, I started computer engineering and then switched to electrical. Mm, yeah. So so you started telecommunications. Yeah. And then eventually, while still at Alabama, you switched. Yeah, I switched to, uh, well, I was going, I, I finished out, I think, my time at Alabama in telecommunications. Mm -hmm. But, like, I knew that I was going to, before uh, we got to the end of the first semester, I knew that I was going to transfer. Changing. I was going to transfer to UT yeah. and do um, sport management because they had a better sport management. So program. what was kind of the, like, what led you to transfer and, like, go back to UT versus staying in Alabama? It was a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I kind of uh, dealt with, like, a lot of, uh, like, depression. Mm. And kind of, like, not like really. Like being away from family. From... Uh, I think just kind of not feeling like I really, uh, like, fit in anywhere yeah like not feeling like I, I belonged and like it was also kind of this like uh like very much a weight on me because I had like set up this like life for myself in my mind right of like this is what my life is going to be like at Alabama mm -hmm. it's going to be this great thing right. like I'm going to be like because I have never like like I've the world has always worked for me yeah because like I'm I just come from like a like good a good family, good family. Yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm white right. like know you know you everything has always worked for me so yeah. I was like this is going to work for me yeah. this mm -hmm. is how it's going to go yeah. I had it on my mind like this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. and like none of it panned out like mm -hmm. none of it panned out um and so I just felt like you know I didn't belong there for several different reasons um just kind of this feeling I think of like being 18 for the first time on your own not mm -hmm. knowing like kind of who you are, like, mm -hmm. where you fit in. Yeah. Um, you know, this feeling of, like, why isn't my life going the way that, like, I, I thought it should be? Mm -hmm. Like, I've built up this, you know, thing in my mind, and yeah. it's not living up to this expectation. Right. Like, is it my fault kind of thing? For sure. Plus, like, I know Alabama specifically, um, like, I mean, I, hopefully people have seen, I, I personally haven't watched it, the documentary that just came on on yeah, like Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Max? Bama Rush. Oh. Yeah, Bama, Bama Rush. Bama Rush yeah. with like sorority lives and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it, like Alabama is one of those schools that's like very well known for mm -hmm. like party life, mm -hmm. Greek life, mm -hmm. and like all that. And like, you know, three of us specifically, like growing up in high school and stuff, we weren't doing that. Like we mentioned in, in the last episode that we would always have guys over at my house for like mm -hmm. sleepovers and we were all like always chilling. Mm -hmm. But... I remember my mom told me like very early on the reason she would let people come over to my house literally every single weekend was because if they were at our house under her watch, mm -hmm. quote unquote watch, right. um, we weren't going to be like getting in any trouble. We weren't going to be like out partying and drinking. And, and for the most part, like our group of friends in high school, like we never did mm -hmm. yeah. any like mm -hmm. anything that was like even remotely like off, oh, yeah. the, we off were the straight path, ideal you know, children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so. I'm sure going from that type of lifestyle into a very like party school Greek life atmosphere mm -hmm. and like not knowing like the how to fit in part of it. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm sure that's like super difficult. Yeah, completely new environment. Yeah. You have these classes that like have such a like a burden on them that you weren't, like, like weren't expecting too. either. Yeah. 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 So was that part of the I don't fit in conversation that you're kind of like struggling with yourself? Yeah, I think it was a lot of just different things. Um, but I mean, that was definitely like that was definitely a part of it. Um, kind of just uh, I mean, uh, going back to like what you were talking about with Greek life. Yeah. Um, like I think the one in four like. Uh, students at Alabama at the time that we were there yeah. was uh, Greek life. And, and I'm sure like, it's... That, which was, like, I think, second highest in the nation at the time. Mm -hmm. But, like, I mean, you, you yeah. kind of step back from that and you're like, that's not that high. Like, that's one in... Right, it's like, like 25%. It's, it's 25%. Yeah. Like, it's high, but it's not that high. Yeah. But, Honestly, like, fair. But it, my understanding was that Greek life kind of, like, ruled... Absolutely. Alabama culture. Yeah. My dad... Um, yeah, the culture. I think that's fair. Yeah. No, it absolutely does. My dad, he went there uh, back in, like, the early 80s. Yeah. And he, he talks about stories about how, like, um, like there was a pizza uh, pizza place called Bambi, uh, Bama Bino's Pizza. Yeah. And, like, it was a lot supported by the fraternity parties because they would order from there. They would go there. Huh. And then um, I think the owner of the place's daughter... Like ran for SGA, but she wasn't a part of Greek life. Greek life, and they shut down the business. Like they stopped wow. working from it. Mm. Like, like went the, out of business. Yep, yeah, and it went out of business. It, it's so crazy to think about because, like, so I never ever had like an inkling of like even wanting mm -hmm. to be in Greek life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if either of you like tried to rush or what's it called for guys. For guys. Uh, it's Pledge. Not called Pledge. Pledge. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if either of you, like, even tried to do that or whatever, but mm -hmm. sounds like at, like, a school like Alabama, like, it was, like, if you didn't, then, like, you were kind of, like, cut out from, like, the social scene, unless you could, like, create it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so there was almost, I mean, yeah, it might be interesting to have somebody's perspective who, like, actually went through that. Right, for and sure. We knew, and we were friends with a couple people who also pledged yeah. um, some better, or some better friends than others. Yeah. But, um, no, I mean, it, it, you kind of, like, created a group uh, like separate from that group right and so you, it was easier it was a lot easier at least in my experience to like branch out into like the sororities like you could know a lot of people from sororities a lot easier as yeah. like a guy than, than it was to like become friends with guys in fraternities yeah. because right. they just had that mm -hmm. circle that they were within i did a square and said a circle <laughs> <laughs> that they were in and they're always with their and they, they kind of have to be during like the pledge process you're always with your right. brothers yeah so they really do become like a very tight knit circle. Did it the right way that time. There it is. Um, so I, I do think, you, but you could still carve out. I mean, like you're saying, one in four. It's not really that much. Yeah. You can still carve out a friend group, For but sure. it was hard to navigate. Like you, I don't know if you could go to Alabama and navigate completely around the Greek life. It was very right. pervasive. Right. There were all. I mean, even like uh, for homecoming. It's like that's Greek life centered, where yeah. you're trying to get Greek. What's well, interesting that you're saying like, that. like SGA even yeah. is like Greek life centered, and like yeah. you can't even be in student government. For those that don't know, SGA is Student Government yeah. Association. Mm -hmm. um, it, you like can't even be involved it's hard. if you're not. Yeah, hard. Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing that I've learned just in like the last like year of being in like corporate America, like mm -hmm. high finance role, right, mm -hmm. is Greek life is even as like a 26, 27 year old is like super polarizing yeah. because I, I've seen multiple times where, you know, people want to do Greek life, sure, for the party life aspect, aspect of it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the main draw for a lot of people or maybe the excuse that they make is like the networking side and like wanting to make connections and that type of stuff. And like what we're talking about, it's a very easy way to make a friend group, especially yeah. like sororities. Like 100%. You're, you're like with like a bunch of people, you're trying to figure out where you want to go as well. So I do, yeah. and I know people, I mean, it's like we know people who the friends that they made during Rush mm -hmm. are still the friends that they know today. Right, right, right. So there is that. I do think that's an, uh, that is a, a significant part of it. Yes. The interesting thing is nowadays what I have found is like if you – if you're hiring manager, if you put that you were in Greek life in on your resume or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, like KA. Okay. I don't – that's an example. Sure. Um, if your hiring manager was a part of that, 100%. You were given some sort of like advantage in mm -hmm. in the hiring not not even an advantage but like preference in the in the hiring process of, you know, they they feel like they have a personal connection to you, right? Sure. In the opposite sense, which I think people ignore or don't realize, is there are so many people out there 
that so like so badly hate Greek life yeah. that you put any letters on your resume yeah. and they're automatically throwing your resume in the trash. Right, because you know? of the stereotype that comes because, with it. Yeah, because of the stereotype that comes with it. And I think it is very 50-50. So it's like you're you're taking a chance. That's a big risk. You, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know if I would do if that. If you're losing a job because – but in the same way, like you could just as likely gain a job from it. You know, It's yeah. like a very hard line to balance, I feel like. Yeah. I personally really hate Greek life. Because yeah. of an experience that I had when I came to visit you two. <laughs> oh, well, actually, yeah. I remember this. you guys were the only part of the weekend that made it good. Yeah. It was because we were visiting a different friend that was at Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went and this this uh, this girl was like, hey, we're going to show you a good time. We're going to take you to a frat party. This is mm-hmm. our freshman year yeah. of college. Yeah. She's like, we're going to take you to a frat party. Um, and I was like, great. Like That sounds awesome. Let's yeah. go. Um, I've never been before. That sounds fun. Yeah. And so we go, me and uh, another close friend of ours uh, who is African American. Yeah. It was the two of us um, and our white female friend. Yeah. We go and uh, we're at the party. She's like introducing us to like some of her friends, like someone that she's like going to formal with or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go into the frat house. I don't actually remember what fraternity it was. It's probably better. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, But so we go in. And I swear, within the first, like, 11 seconds, yeah. we have, like, older brothers, like, coming up to us, approaching us, like, like literally the stereotypical classic, like, who do you know here, yeah. right? Yeah. And I had just met this guy, right? Like, our, our friend's formal date. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, like, I know that guy. I don't remember his name. Let's call him Nick. Yeah. But um, he, I was like, yeah, I know that guy, Nick. Yeah. And they go up to him. Supposedly, he was like had just finished his pledge class or like whatever. Like he was, he had just become a brother or something. They look at him. They look me and my African American friend up and down and they go, yeah, we can't have people like them in here. And it's like, you start looking around the party and then you start to notice like, yeah, Yeah. you know what they're saying. You start to notice like what everyone has in common. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, I certainly don't want to be somewhere that, I don't want, like, that right. I'm not, like, wanted. Yeah. And then so I called you guys up, and yeah. I was like, hey, what are you guys doing? Let me come over. Yeah. And then and then we had a great night. Yeah. Um, I but I remember that one experience just so, like, so much solidified for me that I was like, nah, forget this. Yeah. So it's interesting. I actually didn't realize that it was only one in four people at Alabama. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. seems like such a low concentration, but it's like. Yeah, but it's it's like. It, it's like one in four, but like it's a lot of people who are like, you're gonna see more like actively about. Yeah. Like they're they're const- they're the ones like you're always gonna see like letters when you're walking around. Yeah. And, like they're the ones who are gonna group up in yep. like classes. Like you're gonna see them out. Like if you go out somewhere, like the the groups that are forming are usually some like circle of that. Right. Which isn't say like us. Uh, like we would go out. Yeah. And we would do things, and yep. we'd have our own circle as well. But yeah, it, it was it was hard to navigate around. I don't know if you could have gone all four years and completely yeah. just been, like, agnostic right. of it. I also, well, like, I mean, kind of going back to you, like, that's what I've, like, admired you about you, like, over the years is that, like, you, like, stuck it out. Like, you were like mm-hmm. me. Like, we didn't, mm-hmm. like, weren't in fraternities and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like, you very much, like, like stuck it out. And granted, yeah. like, you know, we were friends with, like, and, like mm-hmm. you know, girls that were in sororities. Yeah. But, like, I mean, you know, it, it's tough. Like, it's yeah. tough going down there and not yeah. being in, like, I'm a, like I know so many people, right. other people that have like Cave or whatever. Yeah, like um, I'm not gonna say his name. Yeah, but there was a guy that was a few years in uh, ahead of us. Yeah, that went to the University of Alabama at uh, that we went to high school with. Yeah, and um, he, um, I don't think he made it the right. full full year. Right. I mean, it, it's like a really tough like environment to be in. Mm-hmm. But so, all of that said, you ended up transferring to UT. Yeah, and did you find a little more sense of like home sense of like belonging when you transferred? It was still tough. Yeah. Um, it was still tough. Like, obviously like I lived with you and Tristan mm-hmm. who I had known, you know, I'd known y'all like all my life For basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I was 30 minutes away from like my family. Like yep. I would go on the weekend and like, you know, watch football with my dad, like yeah. go to church with my, uh, like family on Sundays. Right. Um, so, it was uh, it was better, but there was still like a lot. College, I, I look back at college now, and it's just still a lot 
of like trying to figure out who I am, trying to figure out where I fit in the world, trying yeah. to figure out. So I never, I, I don't feel like I ever really went through college and like, um, like felt this kind of sense of like, oh, I belong. Like whether at UT or whether at Alabama, um, I never feel like I really had that sense. Um, yeah. But like because it was just nice to be like, like living with like mm -hmm. you guys and right. like being close. No, to them, I think that that's made it, like it made it a lot easier. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's like the great part about like doing something like this because I think a lot of people honestly fall in that category yeah. of like I don't know what I'm doing, but people don't want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I think a lot of people, especially like young people that are like starting college, they tend to assume that like oh like college is like the best experience of your life and yeah. like and you're gonna you make so many in, friends and you're gonna fit in and you're gonna find your group and blah 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 and i think people don't talk about the like the struggles of college mm -hmm. like how difficult it is and like how stressful it is like trying to balance like because you're an adult for the first time in life yeah you know yeah and like depending on your family like you either have a lot of support and you can lean on them or yeah. like you don't at all yeah and even know? like when you do have support it can be like my it could be five hours away yeah so it only goes so far like right. you can like you can call your parents you can talk to your like siblings or whatever but it only goes so far so yeah you do have to but it's it's almost like within those like first like six months like if you don't like find a group it can be like very difficult to like find a group and then it kind of spirals a yeah. little bit where it's like i'm not finding a group am i ever gonna because find now, a group? now everyone else has a group right yeah. and it's like you know it can get into your like your school life as yep. well and it can just do that spot i've seen that spiral before yeah um yeah no it, it, it is very true i mean i have felt that way numerous different times and like it wasn't until i went to like unc that i felt like oh like i have a group because of me yeah. like it yeah. isn't like because of anyone else it isn't because i'm like following anyone else into their group or like yeah you know, being, like, pulled into groups because of whatever, like, and, like, I didn't go to UNC until, well, like, 2020, like, I was 24 years old at the time, like, so it took, like, a long time, like, I do think I had, like, a good group of, like, engineering friends mm -hmm. at Tennessee, yeah. but it, I don't know, it always felt, like, a little different, you know, yeah. um, but for you, okay, so when we were living together, mm -hmm. I remember our first year living together, was absolutely fucking miserable. <laughs> I wouldn't like, say that. I, I wouldn't say that. Not not specifically me and you. Just the three of our dynamics. Well, yeah, I know we what you're just saying. So different. Yeah. In the way we lived. I felt that way more so. I think about the second. The second year. Okay. Maybe, <laughs> the maybe you're right. Maybe the first year. I think the we first were, like, year was a little bit. Yeah, it was like that was a kind of like feeling out phase. Okay, actually, probably fair. Yeah. But I do remember uh, by like the end of like our second year lease which we only did two leases. we only did two years and then we were like nope uh, yeah by the end of that up. second lease i remember being like all right I, it, it, we like, just all three lived life so differently i remember for me personally um i was like always at school like studying or whatever or i was like i was dating a girl at the time so i was like always at her apartment and like whatever and then uh tristan and zach would be like hey where are you like what are you doing we're trying to hang out like are yeah. you coming home ever I'd be like, <laughs> yeah i might come home in like two weeks like, you yeah. know yeah. and then i know uh our other roommate he was just like real messy at the time zach would like love to leave and just not tell us where he was going right. and, and tristan got really mad about <laughs> this that was the first that was like within like the first month that we lived together i was um i was going to campus for like some kind of like club thing and um like, I was just, like, I'm very private. Yeah. And so I was just, like, I'm, like, I'm just going to walk out. Not anymore. I'm going to walk. Yeah. Well, that's still <laughs> to a point. Yeah. But I've just kind of overcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it. you. Yeah. Um, but, like, I remember, like, I'm, like, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to walk out. Right. And because uh, I didn't want y'all to ask where I was going. Yeah. But um, naturally, he and I were sitting on the on the couch going? playing Xbox or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and y'all were, like, where are you going? I'm, like, out. And you're, like, yeah. out where? And I was, like out dude like i'll see y'all later <laughs> he was literally like and tristan, tristan kept again. digging in he was just like where are you going and zach would be like places <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'm like stop asking it's none of your business like and tristan was like zach we have to tell each other things like we're brothers and i looked at him and i was like y'all aren't my brother I that, and i dude, walked out oh I closed man the door. that almost ruined a 20 years of friendship <laughs> not even joking because yeah, yeah. i remember that so clearly tristan looked at him and he was like we tell each other things we're brothers and zach looks at him and he goes 
you're not my brother. <laughs> it was like some movie so type dramatic, shit. Yeah. It, it was extremely it was, yeah, dramatic. It was dramatic. Yeah, it was so dramatic. <laughs> um, I had the, I, I puffed out my chest that thing as I walked out the door. I was like, you're not my brother's. <laughs> yeah, and then just the slam the door shut. <laughs> just into yeah. the night. Like, Maybe so it was probably like 2 p.m. But yeah, yeah. We're in the third quarter of this Madden game. Do we keep playing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we had to stop and just be like, what just happened? You know? yeah. But, I mean, all that to say, like, it's kind of hard to, like, you know, people always say, like, don't live with your friends in college yeah. or whatever. And I think people, like, take that lightly. And, I mean, honestly, I still think live with your friends because yeah. – for me personally, I think like it made our relationship like stronger, better eventually. I yeah. think also like I wouldn't have traded those two years for anything in the yeah. world. Like I really, really wouldn't have. Like even though we had like our disagreements, we had like yeah. our problems and everything. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and do it but any different. Right? right? Like in high school, we even though we like loved hanging out and we like loved it, right? Yeah. The disagreements and shit that we had were like so few and far in between. Probably honestly, probably none. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. In college was like the first time we like started having like fights with each other. I've never in my life fought with a friend before, you know? Yeah. But it's like you need to learn and like yeah. do that to figure out like in other relationships, like what type of, you know, like how confrontational are you and yeah. that type of yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a very interesting time in our lives. Yeah. That's for sure. That second year was tense to walk into. Yeah. <laughs> like it's an objective third party. Every now and again, you just walk into it and you'd be like, I can feel the tension. Like somebody has said something over the last 10 days right, right. that everybody is still fuming on. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even remember like what we like. I mean, I remember a few things. Like I think like cleanliness and tidiness yeah. was definitely a part of it. Yeah. But I, like honestly, like I, aside from that, I don't remember. I was, like, very rarely, especially that second year. I feel like I was rarely yeah. there. Yeah. But I, I do remember, like, I eventually just came to peace with your I'm going places thing. Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. would ask, and he would just be like, I'd be like, where are you? And he'd be like, I'm out. And yeah. Like, where? And right. he'd say, places. Right. And eventually I was just like, you know what? He's going to do his thing. Exactly. I'm just going like, to go. Forget it. I'm just going to fly. Yeah. 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 So I, I can imagine that scenario, but that yeah. is. But point being, in, in the midst of all that internal turmoil that we were going through we found our own like individualism yeah. you know um i started doing like youtube uh our, our friend tristan got super involved in like model un basically like built the team at, at tennessee yeah. from scratch yeah, yeah, yeah. um and like student government and stuff yeah and you started doing like a lot of like music stuff i remember yeah especially towards like the end of like our second year yeah. like i was i was trying to get more into like music right and, like, so i would love to know like a little more about like how that came about and like because like when we were young like fifth sixth grade right yeah. i remember you chose not to do like an instrument right no i so i did fifth and sixth grade and then after that i, I did, did you do band. you did the, the keyboard or you did band i did i did band i was uh clarinet fifth grade and then okay bass clarinet oh sixth grade. Fancy. so yeah so um but i just never vibed with it like it was always like it was like, because we were like, at the time, uh, like, I mean, sitting here now, like, as an adult, I can appreciate it. Yeah. But, like, as a kid, like, you know, you're playing, like, all these songs that, like, personally, like, I don't care about. Right. Like, it's a bunch of, like, older music and stuff like that, like, class more classical, I think. Yeah, for sure. And so it's just like, okay, like... Where are the words to these songs? Like I would, like I would literally think that, be like, oh, oh, like this songs don't even have words to. Them. Bro, that's what you're concerned with. Yeah. Beethoven song. <laughs> what? And so, where are the 808s? <laughs> like what? And so I liked listening to music, but I didn't like like clarinet and like those yeah, kind of like the classical music, right? And so like, um, but I did it because like I remember like my mom was like. You're not, like, because the other option, I think, was, like, study hall. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you're not doing study hall. Yeah, yeah no and one did anything in study hall. But that uh, sounds amazing yeah. as a fifth and sixth I mean, you're right. As a kid, that That's does. True. I was that told these true. horror stories of study hall of, like, you can't say anything. You can't look at anybody. You can't go to the bathroom. You just have right. to sit there. And then, like, I think, uh, I was going to say his name, but I think, like, another kid, like, yeah. in our class, like, had study hall. And he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, we just go outside of recess. And, like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> I, was, I have no idea. Yeah. I wow. I also remember like when you would get like in school since suspension. Yeah, I never yeah, got yeah. in school sus oh, suspension. Dude. Can't even say suspension, suspension. apparently. Yeah. But 
apparently you would go to the study hall room and they would yeah. have these like fully purple yeah like cushioned yeah, 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 rooms or whatever yeah and this is middle just, school like, this is middle school middle yeah. school okay and yeah. you would yeah. like have to sit in there and just yeah. like, think about your thoughts but it was one of those like rooms that like it didn't have a ceiling yeah so they people would like throw like notes <laughs> into you or yeah. like throw it out of you yeah. out of there or whatever yeah I don't know. We had a weird school, apparently, that we went to. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember, because uh, I took study hall in 7th and 8th grade. And oh, you did, eventually? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. It was, so, it was, like, fun, because, Super like, chill. you could actually, like, I would get my work done in study hall, and then like, go home and just, like, do whatever I wanted. Oh. But, like, I remember, Absolutely. like, seeing all the, like, I would always see those, like, uh, rooms that they would put yeah. ISS kids in. Yeah. And, like, it literally is just a purple cubicle <laughs> and you're just it's like so scary. but honestly yeah. like we would uh, especially like if there was like a sub it depended on who was running yeah. study hall that day but yeah. especially if it was a teacher who just didn't care like yeah. we would watch movies sometimes like I remember I became good friends with and uh yeah. Uh, and those two. <laughs> just and and study which are like study people hall. that otherwise you would not have right, interacted with right, ever in your right. life. Yeah. Well, me and had like several classes in eighth. Like, this was eighth grade study yeah. hall. We had several classes together. So yeah. we would be like, hey, would you, you know, right, right, for this? Right. So interesting. But, well, so, okay. So then going back to college, like, how did you get back into it? You taught yourself how to play the guitar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think, like, honestly, it started off as just like a tactic to just like, Get be girls. more cool, yeah, yeah. Be more cool. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna learn how to play guitar, and who knows, you yeah. Know? But I would watch like I would watch YouTube videos of people like, um, like doing like covers, like actually yeah. like like um, covers and like um, really doing really cool things with music. And it was like, I don't know, it really like uh, like touch the inner angst, I guess, like college kid that yeah. I was yeah. and it was uh, provided and, an outlet yeah and I was like this is like there's something like to music that like like even sitting here like years later like you can't really explain yeah. like I remember like my growing up and I, I listened to like mainly country like country music growing up okay and so yeah. like um, but like I mean as I got older like I listened to like more varieties and yeah. like uh, especially like kind of in high school, like I I really did try to step out of like my uh, I guess music comfort zone and yeah. like try to explore like different genres and different. Because um, like I remember college age, like you were very into hip hop. Yeah. Specifically Kanye. We got to yeah. say it. We got to well, say it. Well, that came, that came, 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 well, that came was before. Later. That was the old Kanye. <laughs> yeah, 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 you missed yeah. the old Kanye, don't you? No, I remember we had, because we would go to school. You would drive me to the university. Um, yeah, yeah, We sometimes. were living together, yeah. And he, you would play, you would play Kanye, you would play That's the, true. cause Life of Pablo had just come out. Mm -hmm. oh, and man, I remember I'd be yeah. like, this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you like really got into I it. I did, I did. <laughs> and so that was, that was a little after I kind of, I was about to graduate. Yeah. Um, I remember I worked uh, for the, uh, for the local uh, minor league baseball team. Yep. And oh, so like we would be there like from like, you know, probably nine o'clock in the morning right. to like, you know, generally like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And so like, we would have to like prepare the stadium and like clean the stadium and everything before yeah. uh, the games. And so like, I would listen to music and eventually just run out of music to listen to. And so like, I started going through like different artists, uh, uh discography. Uh, oh, and so I started like doing Kanye's discography That's and it lot. really, it's a lot. It's like new sounds that like at the time were just so, uh, unheard of or yeah. just you know very much like a, very a like risk kind of for sure yeah and like now you look back now and you're just like this was like extremely extremely influential yeah um for this time you were just like copying that sound a ton now yeah and so like i remember i like it took me back to listening to life of pablo and i remember like at the time back in like 2016 like i'm like this isn't good this isn't but now it's like you listen to like life of pablo and it like it you know, speaks a different message. It, right. it, the sound is something that, like, you look back at the time and you're just like, you know, it's it was ahead of its time. Yeah. And same thing with, like, in my opinion, like, Yay. You know, like, that album was, like, I remember listening to it for the first time and being like, now, is it I just yay don't feel or is it Yee? It's Yay. How do you know? Because that's what he changed his name to. Yeah, but how do you know that he doesn't pronounce it Yee? Because I have heard him refer to himself as yet. I just mess around. <laughs> but, like, um, you know, that's another one of those albums that, like, I listened to for the first time, and I'm just like, what is this? Like, And then now I listen back to it, and now, and it's like, you know, this is, like, 
this is actually very good. It's very much ahead of yeah. where it was in 2018. And right. I mean, that's I think that that's that can be said for every one of his albums, yeah. mostly, especially Jesus. Jesus, I feel like, is the most. And um, how do you feel about him as an individual now? But I, also, yeah his music now like more mm. specifically like you know jesus is king just came out a couple years ago at this yeah. point donda's is the um, most well donda and donda, donda i completely forgot about yeah, donda yeah, yeah, yeah uh i think well him and as a person like i can't really speak like too much on that like i obviously don't condone or like anything yeah that whatever's happening yeah, that's yeah. Gone yeah. Crazy. Person just, he's, he's, he's gone crazy person. but like i mean i do think that um you know he has a history of uh, like speaking on things or like saying a lot of things that like is very or at the time were very controversial. Mm -hmm. So like, am I surprised? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I the think whole Taylor Swift thing. Yeah, right. Back of the Grammys. Right. Oh. George Bush hates black people. George, yeah. George Bush hates black yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that like his music now is just going to be looked at the same way that um, you know. It's going to be looked at as, uh, you know, it's not great. It's not, you know, it's just mid or whatever you want to call it. But I, I do think that over time we will get mm. to a point where we see it in a different light. And um, I do I do still believe that if uh, kind of with uh, parallels to like the Taylor Swift controversy, I do think that if he was to put out a, a really banging album tomorrow, I think that I think that people would. It. I really do. I really do. I mean, I think that that's just how our culture is. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Adidas forgot about it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Like, so. um, no, I, I agree with you. So I remember um, soon after college, mm -hmm. you bought a lot of uh, recording equipment. Mm -hmm. We're dabbling in the uh, in the music space a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Um, talk about how that experience was. Uh, I think, it, I mean, I still dabble with it a little bit, but I just think that it's just kind of taking time to find, like, your sound and your voice and yeah, try to figure out, sure. you know, what am I as a 20, you know, mid 20, late 20 person saying, you know, what am I saying that's different than anybody else? You know, I feel like, you know, you, nobody wants to hear the same voice or the same thing being repeated over and over again. What can I bring to that's the man. world or offer to the world that is, you know, original or yeah. like a, a perspective, yeah. you know, that has not really you know, been seen before. Oh, that's a really good point. And so it's like, I don't, um, I, I've struggled very much with that, um, you know, trying to find the sound, trying to find my own voice and trying to figure out like what I want to say. Yeah. Um, and it just, uh, I mean, life kind of gets, you know, in the way a little bit. True. And that's not, I mean, I don't think that's really much bills. of an excuse. Yeah, you got to pay bills. But, you know, I do hope that one day I get to the point where I can, you know, figure that out and, you know, really put out something that, that speaks to a lot of people because I think that music has a way of just being able to do that that we can't really um, explain. For sure. You know. And, um, I mean, I can't explain Jared's taste in music. You don't even know my taste You do. Music. You listen to a lot of house music, which is like electronic sounds. I can make that yeah. shit with a blender, bro. You could try. It wouldn't sound good. I would and completely just, disagree with you, Jared. It's classic rock. It is a oh, weird, it's, it's a weird rock? dynamic, yeah. So the classic rock was from my dad's side, but then a lot of people that I hung out in high school, before like our group got it like a little I completely closer. disagree. I gotta say. You disagree with house what? Mu house music, not good. Oh. Wow. Drake tried to make an entire house album, not good. Um, oh, well that's a Drake problem. That's not a house music <laughs> uh, problem. You can't blame the entire genre for one potential artist. Well, I would love to go into some uh, some unexpected questions. Okay. Some right. more lighthearted conversation. Okay. All right. I've written some. Written. Written. How many degrees do you have? I have two. Yeah. You <laughs> have two. Also have two. Yeah. So you're not better than me. I'm not, but you definitely shouldn't have said wrote. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, first question: If you were given ten million dollars today, but you have a killer snail following you for the rest of your life, <laughs> you can't kill it. It's always moving. And it knows where you are at all points of time. And if it touches you, you die. Are you taking the money, yes or no? Where does the snail start? Where do I start? Uh, the snail starts six feet away from you. Yeah, I think I would take that risk, honestly. $10 million, what if you're sleeping? I just, mean, dude, I would just, I would just get in my car. Like, I would, like, While you're sleeping? No. What I would you're do, just never going to sleep? What I would do is I'd be like, okay, it's right there. 
Does what I'm going to do... It, it's a snail. It can't move that fast. Okay. Does it always move towards you? Yes. Yeah. Like, always. Uh, okay. I see where you're going, and you're trying to take this weird fucking engineering geometry route, and I don't really like it. Yeah. No, it's just taking the most optimal route to kill you. Mm. To touch me. Yeah, to touch you. Mm. Which, in turn, kills you. Mm. Yeah, I think I think I could lose it, honestly. What if I... But what if you're sleeping? How does I mean, it, like, it it, how, how much is it going to move in, like, six hours? You know, like, how far is how, it going to move? Like, I'm at work for eight hours of the day. It's probably going to be at my work by the time that <laughs> I leave work. And then I go home. Like, it's not sleep. just waiting for you at yeah, home. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh. Like, it follows me. And it all takes... So, yeah, I think I could, I yeah. think I could outrun like, it for the majority of my life. So, like, that's my question. Does it always come after where I am? Or does it, like, start it to, like, smart? know it, where I ooh, go? Ooh, I like this. You know? Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to say it's smart. Maybe it's waiting for okay, you at home because it knows that you're coming it. back. I don't need it, then. I'm out. Yeah, you're because, not getting the $10 million. No, I don't need it. I just move. Yeah, but that's my other question. All right, let's say I buy, like, a, I have $10 million now. Mm-hmm. Let's say I go buy, like, a house, like a villa yep. on, like, the eastern coast of, like, Italy. Okay. How does the snail cross the water? It gets on a plane. It sneaks it on a plane. It gets on a plane? It sneaks on that's a plane. Bullshit. It, no, I mean, that's bullshit. No, I don't take, want this over my head then. I'm I feel like good, that's going to, I just feel like it's going to take it too much time uh, for it to be able to find me see, where I am at. Because I'm on, I'm constantly moving. Listen, I kind of agree with Zach. But, I'm taking yeah. money. but he said I'm it's money. smart. It, yeah, but yeah. it can only move so, it's a snail. I know. It can only move but so here's fast. The thing. If it's smart. Yeah. You've got a house. Yeah. What if it just sits in your closet? And it lets you get comfortable and complacent. It just waits there. And then when you're sleeping, all it has to do is cross 20 feet in the span of eight hours. It can do that. Yeah, That's but I'm just... That's a lot of feet, That's a lot of You guys are going to die at 30. Should we, look up, should we look up the average moving speed of a snail? No, if it was a dumb snail, I, like if the snail was just always going towards you. Yeah, yeah. So they, like you they, go they, on they, like they, a vacation with your family in California, and you're out there for like a week. Yeah. The snail's just... It's in Kansas. Gunning for yeah. It's in Kansas, and then you go back to Tennessee, right? And yeah, so, so then it has to come back, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. But if it's a smart snail, it just stays. In it's just gonna stay at your house. It's like let me get in his bed and right. just wait there, right? Or what if it gets in your toilet? What's wrong with that? It just slithers up. You never see it coming. Then I you're just, just dead on the toilet. I just don't think snails Elvis. have that capacity to think like. Oh, that. He's saying they do though. Yeah, yeah. This is a. He's a saying smart this snail. is a snail that it's is an AI snail. snail. Yeah. This is just too much. This is like a I'll run the risk. Like, I'll I, run I kind of agree. Risk. I will also run the risk. Maybe I'm I'll out. invest my money in in a bunch of stocks. Anti snail like, killing. Anti snail killing. Wait, what? Or snail killing. Yeah, <laughs> anti snail killing device. Like an anti snail killing device. Comma. comma. Or hyphen. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. This is where the comma. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Killing device. Yes. And then you are just if you die, then yeah. at least your family, your kids get. To if the snail dies, do I die? What? Like what if like the snail can't die? What if what if like a hawk eats it? Can't I? So it just gets it just gets pooped out fully intact. This snail is indestructible. Yep. I see. I'm just out. Indistru- now. Okay. I don't. I just. So you're, don't, you're I don't poor. Need this. You're poor. I'm what I am right now. You're ten million dollars poor. So I am poor. Yeah. Um. Originally, this question was one million dollars, but here, here, this comes Inflation. to a different question. Oh. Well, almost kind of a little, a little bit, bit. Yeah. Because is a million dollars like life changing money? No. I feel like nowadays it's really not. I don't even know if $10 million is life-changing money. Wow. Yeah. Life-changing? You, rich, you How many... Let's say you most Let's say you, you plan to live a long life. Mm-hmm. So you're going to live like another 40 years? Yeah. So most people like save up like a couple million dollars to mm-hmm. retire, mm-hmm. but they're spending like however many tens of thousands of dollars like every single year yeah. for 30 years. You don't think that you could go through $10 million in like 50 years? Could I go through $10 million? Like if I die at like... I think you could... Call it... 80. Yeah. That's like 55 years. Five years. Yeah. You don't think you can go through $10 million in 55 years? If I spend 100000 a year, that's only $5.5 million. Hmm. But I, I would say most retired people, their like house is paid off. Mm-hmm. They're like only paying a little bit in taxes, like based on mm-hmm. how much they're drawing and mm-hmm. whatnot. Yeah. And you have $10 million, so you might overspend on a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Like you know you have it in the bank, you know? I don't know, man. I don't think one million is a life changing amount. Like I that. agree with that. One million no. is certainly not worth it. Like yeah. when people win like a million dollars on like I don't know a game show or whatever, it's like right. you're gonna lose half that to taxes, and then it's like, right. yeah. is it worth it? No. Yeah. Ten? I don't know. I think it changes the conversation. You might be a rich person. It changes the conversation. Um. Okay. Next question. Uh, you have TSA pre-check. 
Yeah. Okay. I do have that. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is great. Do you have TSA pre-check? I've had it before. I don't know if I still have it. I currently do not have pre-check. Mm. You are traveling with a friend mm -hmm. who does not have pre-check. Mm -hmm. Oof. Are you leaving them yes. and meeting them? <laughs> I didn't even finish the question. Are you leaving them and meeting them on the other side? Or yes. are you going to go with them? No. No. I'm leaving them and go. I've done that so many times. I don't even know why this is Why? The question. What do you mean, why? You don't want to just chat with your friend? No, just... that line is so long. You're still waiting on them. I, I'll i see you at the terminal. I'll get something And go get me a Cinnabon, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to potentially miss so my you're not gonna wait because... at the. you're not going to wait at security? You're not going to get through security and just wait on them? No. Bad friend. Mm, it mm. depends on how Bad long friend. the line is. It's long. Oh. Hour. Yeah, then no, hour I'm versus 10 minutes. I'm not oh, well, that. then see you. I'll see you at the terminal. Yeah. Get, wow. Get pre check. You well, know how easy it is to get pre check? I actually don't because it's I've tried and the appointments were not available. In what state? In, here? In Virginia. Do it here. You're allowed to do it anywhere? Yes. Yeah. Do it here. There's so many. I did it here. Is it worth it? Yes, it's I've eighty dollars every five Listen, years. I've seen lines where the pre-check line is longer than the non-pre-check line. I have line. never seen a pre-check line be longer. I've also heard that at pre-check you don't have to take your shoes off and you don't no. have to take your laptop out. You don't have to, you don't have to take your belts off either. That's honestly. Fair. You literally just put your bags down, walk through, you're done. Yeah. I've never. It's never taken me more than fifteen minutes to go through five different airports with pre-check. Interesting. Just get pre-checked. Okay, so you guys are bad friends. That's what that's what I got from the that conversation. Fine. Get pre-checked. Um, okay, <laughs> get pre-checked. Pre this is this is a sponsor or this is an ad for TSA pre-check. Pre yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Okay. Next question: If you make plans with uh with a group of friends or friend or whatever uh -huh. or a person, uh -huh. um, are you the type of person that is definitely going for sure? You're like, hey, do you want to make plans? You're like, yes. Or are you the type of person that's like, you say maybe because you're trying to find a way out. Depends mm. on the friend. I say yes or no. I disagree with your answer for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're always a maybe. Uh, uh, you're that kind of friend. No, <laughs> me? No. no well, kidding. no, I'm because kidding. like I get it. Like you get comfy in your house yeah. and you're just like, I yeah. got the day to myself. I work really hard yeah. during the week. Like I'm just gonna chill. Yeah. I don't want to like be on like right. out in public. I try to think it through. Where, if I if I'm that, if I'm in that mentality, I will say, I'm just trying to chill today. Let's do it. Tomorrow. Oh, so you'll say no? See, yeah. I have a hard time saying no because I don't want to hurt hurt people's feelings. Yeah, I'm certainly the type that's like, yeah, you just maybe. Want to, you just want to drag them along and kill them by a thousand stabs by a snail. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What I like to do is I like to be like, you know, it depends on what the situation is, obviously. Yeah. But like, if I don't really want to do it, then I will uh, not answer for like a few days so you just ghost them yeah, yeah and then like a day after the event happens or whatever, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. like sorry dude uh, I was asleep you know, oh yeah, yeah I was dude. asleep yeah. Yep. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what happened that's like those uh, those like tweets that you see of people on like Tinder or whatever they'll like hit up someone six months after the fact and they'll yeah. be like oh sorry my bad I was asleep yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the energy that's that you're giving is, that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting okay last thing I want to talk about the new Netflix password sharing controversy Oh, isn't feel? that going into effect this month? It's happening right now as hmm. we speak. You can no longer Netflix password share with your family. Yeah. And, uh, like, yeah, if you're, like, not in, like, the, the household of the person that has the account or whatever, then, like, you get locked up. Really? I think you maybe get, like, five logins or something like that, and then you're, like, locked out. Hmm. I don't even know when the last time I used Netflix. What honestly. do I feel what? about it? Yeah. I'm really using Netflix oh, anymore. I think it's stupid. I mean, it's stupid, because I think yeah. Netflix themselves. I mean, if you go back to Netflix tweets in like 2020 or something this. like that, Seen yeah, this. they're like sharing is caring. Yep. They ran an entire advertisement saying sharing is caring. Yep. And now they're just trying to squeeze every penny out of it. Yes, no, sir. fuck them. They suck. They are. Yeah. They are. There's that what we. This is this is PG-13, right? So we only get one F word. No, no, no. Well, this it's, it's actually going to be R right now. Fuck Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, no, I don't know if Netflix is trying to sponsor this or whatever. Well, they're not. <laughs> Modelo is sponsoring us. So yeah, yeah. Apparently, Modelo is sponsoring. Yeah. No. They suck. So, yeah, I, I completely agree. No, if they lock me out, I'm just going to stop using them. I, I agree. It's the yeah. same thing with Reddit. Which, like, I don't use Reddit anymore because they like Reddit? killed the third-party apps. So I'm Yeah, out. but what I'm I, done. that one I don't understand as much because I'm like... They they jacked up their API calls. So basically, every time somebody like requests information, sure, that's like an API call. Yes, so, but I don't understand that one because I'm just like, you can still use Reddit. Why, yeah, do, you, why do we care if they don't let third parties Because the Reddit app sucks the Reddit oh, really? website sucks so everyone uses third parties basically or people either use old reddit 
or the third party. It's like mm-hmm. Apollo was the one that I used on iPhone, but you got, got it. a different Android. But okay. yeah, it's like the, the, the third party apps were like ex, like exponentially better and to the point like a lot of people were using the third party apps yeah. and they had done everything through the third party apps. So like why should they have to change their app just because Reddit's getting greedy? But how, I mean, is Reddit even making money? I don't really understand. Yes, they 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 made they like crossed. Mm, I don't know if this. I think they crossed like the billion dollar mark. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know. So they make I like no they do make a lot of money. But to your point, like I agree, if Netflix does this like password sharing thing, like yeah, I'm out. are gonna stop. Yeah, using I've, it. I've gone cold turkey. Sounds like you've already stopped using it. Uh, I just don't use it as much anymore. Um, what do you use instead? Where your go-to streaming? Uh, Hulu. Max. Hulu. 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 Max. Really? Max, Max is, is a good I've been, choice. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of Max. I, I held out on Max for a long time. Yeah, I legitimately it. just got it maybe like two months ago. It's worth it. Yeah. And it it's great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. I do Hulu for TV, though. Like live TV? Mm-hmm. Hulu's Hulu, got, Hulu has live TV. Expensive. Hulu's got good stuff. Expensive. It's $85. That's expensive. As compared to cable? I mean, what? what's cable? It's like in bucks? the hundreds. <laughs> okay, so they're $15 that you just Yeah, said. but like... Then you're also still getting like the other streaming platforms. I don't know. I think. But you're also getting enough. Hulu apart. Like what? Like you're yeah, getting yeah. and if you're getting Hulu, I was using Disney YouTube TV. And ESCN. That's true. It, but is it all three plus live TV for eighty five bucks? Uh, I think it's all three plus for like ninety something dollars. So I I did YouTube TV for a while, mm. um, and but I just realized I never use live TV. Mm. I just don't care. Also, I use a uh, Peacock. Really? Yeah, I gotta watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, dude. What? <laughs> what? No, you don't. I do. The no, office. you don't. Yeah, it's I the do. Office, well, like, the office is up. Office and Parks and Rec. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, all Real Housewives shows. You're joking. Dude, I'm not. I'm dead serious. I'm dead ass. Why? Dude, they're actually kind of entertaining. Go watch them. No! If you like bad reality TV. That's what I do it's like at. bad reality dude, TV. Dude, you'll love it. I think uh, Kevin Hart's Netflix special is actually coming out on mm-hmm. Peacock. The in six, like a I couple think. days, yeah, on yeah, the six. Mm. Yeah. So heart to heart, I want to watch that too. That's is that Peacock. is it also on Peacock? Peacock? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Peacock I think has like done a lot of investment into just like shows and like just acquiring. They're on the I'm surprised up. they haven't died. I thought they I'm were gonna just flounder. Surprised. You guys remember Tubi? Tubi flounder. That that uh, yeah, that yeah, fever just... dream that we all had. Yeah. No, no, you're thinking of Quibi. Quibi. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The app. Yeah, that was a fever dream. Yeah. Like five minute like shorts or whatever. It no, was. Th- uh, there was I think one they did, did like... have full length stuff mm. too, mm-hmm. but it was only on like mobile devices mm. and it was like vertical content, maybe? I think so, yeah. I don't it know, know, but it was really around weird. they like marketed super heavy and then like launched and people were like about it for like a week and yeah. just like completely and then killed it. Just it. Completely died. Yeah. Yeah. Um No, I think Max is good. Uh yeah. are you guys gonna watch uh Barbie or Oppenheimer? Both. Oppenheimer, I'm not as You're big on, watch the, Barbie? on the Barbie. Yeah. You're not as big on Oppenheimer. That's what you said. No, I'm big on I've, on Oppenheimer. I'm not big on Barbie. Well, I you don't. Have against I don't. Robbie and I, Ryan I have nothing against them personally, but I I don't know what this what is it. Sounds like you hate feminism. Like what? <laughs> what is Barbie? What do you mean? Like what it's is Barbie. the movie? You know, no, but just like play Barbie. Like, like give me the, like what's like the two sentence plot? Good tell you. Exactly. Pink. Yeah. Like, I can give you the two-sentence plot of Oppenheimer, and that's why I'm going to watch it, but I'm not going to... It's historical. Right. Everyone knows what happened. No, but the... They made some bombs, things went boom, boom. Exactly. Every historical (laughs) film now just, you don't watch it because you already know what was going to happen. Honestly, I'm looking for the climax, and where's the climax? I know what's going to happen. You know they... Spoilers. They should really put spoilers in textbooks. In history textbooks. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's why I haven't watched Titanic. You know they thought that... (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did you say Titanic? Titanic. Titanic. You haven't watched (laughs) Titanic. They thought they were going to blow up the world. That's the drama. Oppenheimer did. Yes. But they, they were, didn't. So they were failures. Right. Well, um, they it like they were worried that, that it would cause a chain reaction that wouldn't stop. That was the Which problem. Which bomb are they talking about? The the hydrogen bomb in like the forties. The one during World War Two. Correct. Japan. Correct. Boom boom. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Boom boom. I yeah, have twice. a funny story about this. I um, don't want to hear this. When I worked at Eastman. Okay. Oh, dude, I don't know if this is appropriate. I thought you said Schmeichman. Schmeichman. Yeah. When I when I worked at Eastman, um, Eastman, I had a boss who used to work at a different company, mm-hmm. and there were some Japanese visitors that were coming to visit him, and they were in this area, 
Um, and he had to go pick them up from the Knoxville airport and drive them to their hotel, which for whatever reason was like in Oak Ridge. Mm. So driving in Oak Ridge and they look at the National Laboratory, right? They're like mm. driving past it. And he's like yeah. pointing out, he's like, oh, this is Oak Ridge National Not Laboratory. <laughs> um, and the, the Japanese guy is like, oh, what's that? And he's like, yeah, you know, like this is where they like made the atomic bomb. Yeah. <laughs> and the no, Japanese you're... guy is like, bomb like what what do you mean bomb and you, he goes you know what i mean he goes <laughs> you know like hiroshima and, Nagasaki. <laughs> and, and yeah just quiet for the rest and, of the and ride. and i think the japanese guy was just like oh, oh maybe don't say that don't do time. that again <laughs> uh well this has been another episode of rome's room podcast thank you guys for watching if you like this episode uh, you know, subscribe to YouTube, yeah. like the video, smash that like, uh, button. Smash that like button. Yeah. Um, you can catch this podcast on all podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify. Uh, we still don't know what the Amazon one is. Uh, we think maybe Castbox is one. Um, we, and whatever we, we other made one podcast, we, we, podcast, one. Yeah. uh, whatever, wherever you consume your podcast, make sure you, you go watch this podcast and thank you guys. Thank yeah. you guys for uh, studio audience. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>